Um, I think I thank the chairman for um, for recognizing me. Um, you know, there's there's a lot that is currently be un, being unfolded with the Biden administration with respect to um, certain border policies. And uh, Ms. Sabatino and Mr. Salisbury, I understand you are you both are not in the policy making aspect of it. Um, so I'm I won't harp on on that. Um, element of things, but uh, Ms. Sabatino, you had raised a little bit earlier today about uh, some of the technologies that are currently being deployed at the border and included um, the deployment of facial recognition technology. Uh, I will be candid, this is something that has been of uh, extraordinary concern to, of us, to us here in the committee. Uh, what we're seeing in prior hearings, and we've held uh, quite a few hearings on this, um, is the internal and baked in biases within uh, facial recognition algorithms in certain technologies. Um, but let me take a step back. Uh, Ms. Sabatine, are you aware of the Trump administration's previous policy of metering? Uh, we uh, refer to uh, queue management to ensure the um, you know, manageable throughput of mm -hmm. uh, the flow of traffic at our ports of entry. Mm -hmm. And um, and under the, the Trump administration, or, you know, just in general, that goal was to really essentially cap and, and limit the number of asylees seeking protection under, uh, you know, inciting these capacity restraints. But rather than eliminating the practice that clearly violates international and domestic law. People are free to seek asylum at our border. Um, I'm very concerned that the Biden administration is moving this online uh, with the CBP-1 app. Uh, Ms. Sabatino, migrants and asylum seekers at the border have to use the app to request asylum, correct? Uh, we do see uh, migrants that haven't necessarily used the app that we okay. will process at, port at ports of entry. Um, but what the CBP-1 application does, it puts it in the hands, removing intermediaries and potentially limiting exploitation by TCOs, mm -hmm. the migrants themselves, but allows for uh, the uh, efficient and effective processing uh, by CBP officers. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Sabatino, uh, you know, and I want to cite a little bit, a little bit about some of the previous work the committee has done um, and introduce witness testimony. Testimony uh, from the ACLU during the May 22nd, 2019 uh, oversight hearing uh, titled Facial Recognition Technology, Its Impact on Our Civil Rights and Civil Liberties. Um, and that articulates the dangers of the technology and government use. Uh, in this committee, we've gone through great lengths to prove that facial comparison and recognition technology is racially discriminatory. And we've done this on a bipartisan basis. Um, we found in 2019 that uh, Amazon's algorithms misidentified the gender of darker skinned women in about 30% of their tests. Additionally, um, this technology, and I'd also like to submit to the record uh, documentation from the Washington Post, uh, that Amazon had met with ICE officials over rec uh, its facial recognition systems um, that could identify immigrants. And what we saw therein was that that technology incorrectly matched the faces of 28 members of Congress with those of people who were arrested for crimes elsewhere in the United States. Uh, in the summer, the American Civil Liberties also, um, also conducted that study. And then on top of that, what we're starting to see now is early reporting from the CBP-1 app that migrants from Africa and Haiti are reportedly demonstrating uh, much more difficulty in using the facial recognition app deployed by CBP-1. Uh, my concern is that while we already have quite a few folks using the CBP-1 app, the administration seems to be signaling with its proposed rule change that they're gonna try to make that the primary mode of this. And, um, and I'm very concerned about the implementation of that exacerbating through technology uh, racial inequities that already exist in our system. Um, once the app is fully implemented, can asylum seekers who lack a smartphone or internet access and therefore cannot schedule uh, in 
appointment through CBP-1 be turned back when they present themselves at a point of entry should the proposed rule be enacted? Uh, I certainly would like the opportunity to give you a full comprehensive briefing on our biometric facial comparison technology because it is the algorithm uh, that we use that is distinguished from other algorithms that's high performing. And we have some very significant statistics and technical high match rates uh, with respect to countries of citizenship. The issues with uh, the CBP-1 app that were noted based on the data and the analysis that we did, it was not the, uh, the, the facial uh, biometric comparison, it was the liveness detection uh, that was uh, determining is this a real person and that liveness detection issue which has been resolved because now we've limited it to one individual per unit or group family units uh, you know more specifically um, but that uh, uh, certainly um, was, uh, you know, a capacity issue with the liveness detection versus, and that's where the data uh, errors were coming from. We saw a significant decrease in those data errors once uh, we made it possible for just the primary in a group to do the liveness detection. It, it certainly cut down on the bandwidth for uh, the liveness app. But in terms of uh, the biometric facial uh, comparison, I think if we look, at, because we don't track ethnicity, we look at technical match rates uh, based on countries of citizenship. Uh, and certainly for an example, a, a couple of different regions, Middle Eastern countries, 99.6% match rates, African countries, 99.5% match rates, North American countries, 98.9% technical match rates, and there's, there's others. Uh, but I think looking at the holistic program that we use and, and certainly offer a more fulsome briefing, specifically on the business use cases we have, and I think you know, making the distinction, we use the biometric facial comparison at a time and a place when an individual is normally expected to present themselves for identity verification, um, and we do not conduct surveillance uh, with the facial biometric technology. And do you know if... Um Thank you. Um, Congressman Biggs from Arizona. Congressman Biggs from Arizona. 